Going to Tokyo for the very first time, here are some common mistakes tourists make and tips for a more enjoyable visit so that you don't miss out on anything important. But before we get into the video, a big thank you to those of you who have recently subscribed here and on my second channel, The Happy Gaijin. Want to help the channel grow and help me continue making more content? Please consider subscribing and joining the team too. Okay, mistakes. Mistake number one. Don't compare Tokyo to an other city you visited. Tokyo is unlike any other city on the planet. It's different from other global cities as a result of its unmatched blend of modern and tradition. It's the world's most populated metropolis, housing over 40 million people. It's massive. It's actually over 20 cities merged into one. So the number one mistake is underestimating Tokyo's size, which means underestimating travel time, transportation needs. You are going to walk a lot more than you'd expect, so travellers should plan an itinerary carefully to avoid wasting time or being overtired. On that note, mistake number two is thinking you can avoid public transport. First time travellers to Tokyo might find public transportation intimidating and think that they can walk their way around the city. In reality, Tokyo's public transportation is efficient and very user-friendly, so embrace the subway system. And my tip for nervous first-time travellers is to start off by using the Yamanote line, which is a loop line that covers a lot of Tokyo's major spots. This line runs in two directions, meaning that if you do miss a stop or get lost, it will eventually loop back to where you started. Once you've got the hang of the Yamanote line, try to be more adventurous and consider trying some of those other lines that might get you closer to your end destination. Using an IC card like a Suica, Passimo or Toyka card, either physically or on your iPhone, will really help you here too. Mistake number three, expecting English everywhere. Okay, whilst English is spoken and English speaking in the capital is improving, it's not exactly prevalent. You'll find chain restaurants, larger stores and hotels to be generally English friendly, but you might find navigating smaller stores or asking the general public questions a little bit more challenging. So learning a few basic Japanese phrases or using translation apps can greatly enhance your interactions. On the note of making travel easier, I'd consider mistake number four an important one and it's one that I can actually help you with and that's not having access to a data connection. I usually use my Sakura mobile pocket Wi-Fi to check train times, navigate around the area, research information whilst on location and for translation when needed. So I highly recommend that you have access to an internet connection whilst traveling around Japan and Tokyo. Please consider using my affiliate link in the video description or the QR code. You'll receive a trusted product and I'll receive a small commission at no additional cost to you and you'll be helping the channel out. Mistake number five, purchasing or misusing the JR Pass. An easy mistake to make is purchasing a JR Pass or a Japan Rail Pass when you might not actually need one. So it's important to note that you won't be needing a JR Pass if you're only visiting Tokyo. In fact, the Japan Rail Pass might not even be needed at all due to its cost so I highly recommend that you calculate the total cost of individual ticket prices against the JR Pass before you make a decision. Since a lot of travellers start the trip in Tokyo, it's important to mention that if you do decide that you're going to use a JR Pass, take care of when you activate your JR Pass to make the most of it. Only doing so when you're ready for long distance travel, not just for short trips into the city, so that you can make the most of its value. Mistake number six picking the wrong accommodation. Accommodation can be different in Tokyo and Japan depending on the style of hotel you stay at. Rooms will likely be smaller, with some rooms even having beds against the wall, making it hard for couples to get in and out, especially if they're older or they have mobility issues. Family rooms might be trickier to find too, with some hotels expecting your child to share a bed with you. Smoking rooms and rooms with shared toilets or bathrooms are also common, with many tourists being caught out in this area. So my tip here is to make sure you choose the right room for you and read the small print. Pick a hotel that aligns with your interests and planned activities. Staying in the right district can save you time and hassle. I even made a guide to help figure this out, so make sure you check that one out. 
Mistake number seven, limiting what you eat. Tokyo offers more than just sushi and ramen. Tokyo offers a diverse food scene. Be adventurous and try local izakayas, street food and unique flavors. And my tip would be to try to avoid the common pitfall of trying to book famous, sometimes inaccessible restaurants. Instead, embrace a variety of local food experiences. As a rule of thumb, if you see a line, it's probably gonna be good. But caution if the line is mainly made up of tourists. And on a special note, some restaurants do require you to add your name to a waitlist. So check if this is the case before you join a queue. For those with little ones, search up family restaurants as a good alternative to McDonald's. Mistake number eight. Tipping. Tipping is not really done in Japan and can sometimes be confusing. Therefore, don't worry about tipping or leaving money behind unless the location specifically mentions it. A special note here is that some locations have an included cover charge added to the bill. Usually this will come with a small appetizer like pickles or a snack. And if you do happen to be in Shinjuku, then I highly recommend that you ask beforehand if there is a cover charge and how much it is before committing to the location. Mistake number nine, incorrect footwear. You might find yourself having to take off your shoes more often than expected. As a rule of thumb, remove your shoes when you see a raised entrance with a place for shoes or if walking on tatami mats. You might be surprised to find traditional restaurants, museums, castles and even clothes stores changing rooms requiring you to remove your shoes. My tip here would be to wear shoes that are easy to take off and put on and always wear nice clean socks. Mistake number 10. Okay, taxis. I don't know how taxi fares compare in your city, but generally taxis in cities like Tokyo are expensive, especially when you're traveling solo. However, if you are traveling as a group, normal taxis can carry up to four people and when divided can actually become a reasonable transport option. Although thankfully trains are so convenient and easy to access, I'd personally keep taxis to tricky to get to places. It's also notable to mention that getting to the city from the airport can be quite expensive if using a taxi. So I really think it's important to check out all of your travel options. I have also made a Haneda guide to help you out here. Mistake number 11, not making reservations for attractions. Not making reservations for attractions in Tokyo could potentially lead to not being able to enter an attraction due to high demand and limited capacity. Not only that, but advanced booking saves time and could even help overcome language barriers. It's important to note that you do not need to make reservations for temples and shrines and in fact many locations don't require bookings but if traveling to popular destinations then these might have limited space. Here are some notable locations I'd recommend you book in advance. Tokyo Disneyland and Disney Sea, Ghibli Museum, Team Labs Borderless and the Team Labs Planet, themed restaurants such as the Ninja Restaurant or the Samurai Restaurant etc, high-end sushi restaurants, the Tokyo Skytree, Kabuki performances, animal cafes, tea ceremony experiences or other similar experiences, Mario Kart street tours, etc. You get the idea. A hack here that could work is to arrive super early, about half an hour or 40 minutes before an attraction opens to see if the early bird catches a worm. But this could still be a tricky tactic. Mistake number 12, not checking opening times and days. It's important to factor in the opening times and closing times of attractions and locations you want to visit. It might be common for certain areas or attractions to close one day a week or during certain hours. And it's especially important to check opening hours during public holidays. Overall, I don't think any of these mistakes will completely ruin your trip to Tokyo, but if you can be better prepared, then you'll certainly have a much smoother and positive experience. Do you think I've left any mistakes out? Let me know in the comment section. Here are even more notable mistakes or tips I want to quickly mention. Cash. Japan remains mainly a cash society, especially around local markets and street food. So always carry cash with you. Tourists can be caught out when they realize that most trains within the city stop around midnight. Therefore, always check the last train or the bus schedule. Daylight hours in Japan can catch you out. Depending on the season, the sun can actually rise really early, sometimes as early as 4.30 a.m. in the summer, and in the winter, the sun setting as early as 5 p.m. Start practicing your chopstick skills. Many restaurants only have chopsticks and you might be caught out. On a minor note, understanding simple Japanese body language gestures can help, such as the beckoning hand. In the West, the palm up, come here gesture is common, but in Japan, the hand is turned down and waved inwards. Doing it in the West can be seen as rude. 
the X sign, <laughs> it is a strong gesture to indicate no or not allowed. Hand fanning. When someone fans their hand in front of the face, it usually means no or expresses disbelief. Anyway team, I hope that if you've watched this so far, you feel more confident for your travel to Japan and Tokyo. And if you have, then prove it by commenting with a Japan flag emoji even if you have nothing to say. Looking for more casual content and live streams, then please check out my second channel, The Happy Gaijin. And as you are interested in Tokyo, how about checking out my Tokyo playlist? You'll find guides to areas, tips, and some of my adventures to hopefully inspire you. Thank you for watching. Till next time, stay positive and be a happy Gaijin. Safe travels.